like this beautiful little wooden like I don't know it's really it's really nice and we're just learning about the wines currently and I love Yamanashi like it is like it's located in the bunch of like it's covered in mountains kind of thing and like as you drive through Fuefuki there is hundreds and hundreds of peach trees and grapevines every every single patch of land has a peach tree or a grapevine and all these businesses have grapevines growing over their businesses I, I think that's really cool I've never seen a town like unite like that before I would really really love to come back here in spring oh yeah I forgot to mention it's about 9 a.m. and it's minus 9 degrees it's a bit chilly up here <laughs> Katsunuma Gyozo Winery produces about 400,000 bottles of wine per year. They, uh, they have 23 employees and they were established in 1933 right here in this same spot. Currently it is owned by a third generation of the same family, soon to be moving on to the fourth. The name of the series of wines are named Aruga Branca named after the family's last name, Aruga. Here she is. There she is. Oh, there she is. Uh, what do I want? I want a seven. Uh, no, you want a six. No, I want the sweet one. Oh. Oh. Oh, the sun. This Whoa, very sweet. But good. winery for the day Lumide winery and they have a restaurant here as well and oh my god the view from here is just spectacular maybe about minus one right now but it's so beautiful here I would love to come back when it's like in season but right now it's um Yamanashi doesn't normally get snow but there's snow like scattered all around the place and it's just so so beautiful Okay, so actually the previous owner of this winery decades and decades ago used to be a Shinto priest. So he built a Shinto shrine right here at the winery. Right here at this winery, they practice like this different kind of growing the vines. They actually do it sideways because of the heavy rainfall here in Japan. Not so much European style, but mostly Japanese style. Lumiere Winery is in Fuefuku City, located in the Kofu Basin in Koshu. It was established in 1885, making it over 133 years old. The area for cultivation is about 30 hectares, including the contracted other farms. They make about 180 kilolitres of wine from about 250 tonnes of grape per year. Isn't that amazing? We're down in like the storage area where they store the barrels. It's really cool. I love like going down into these dark, dingy places. It's really cold, but... Okay. It's really cool. Oh. All right, it's time for taste testing. This is a sparkling wine. Oh, look at the glass. So cute. This is a sparkling wine from Koshu Grape. 100% Koshu Grape. Ooh, that is strong. <laughs> 
right, glass number two, Koshu Shuri. With this one, they actually leave the dead leaves in the barrel instead of getting them out, so then they can like get that fermented flavor. This is also quite strong. Kanpai. Last number three, we're onto a red now. This is the Chateau Lumiere. It's a flagship wine. It smells really good. Oh, that is good. That is that is deep. That's nice. In 1877, the Dai Nihon Yamanashi Wine Company was founded by local business holders and central government. They decided to send off two young gentlemen to France to learn the way of making wine. When the gentlemen finally returned, there were many difficulties resulting in the company eventually dissolving. Then one individual named Kotato Miyazaki decided to buy out the company and start his own winemaking company. In 1896, the building you see before you, Mia Cohen, was built and it became the base of the winery. Originally, the second floor was Japanese style, but 90 years ago, they decided to renovate it to become a Western style, but with the first floor staying Japanese style. So we're in the guest house, which is just adjacent to that massive huge house, and the guest house alone is huge bigger than any apartment I've ever seen in Tokyo and it's freezing it is absolutely so cold in here and it makes me wonder how on earth people lived like this a hundred years ago like the floor it's freezing everything is freezing but this has like one two three levels I think this place has it's insane it's huge winery for the day this is Mars Hosaka winery I don't know if you can see but it's actually snowing right now and we're up in the mountains and it's super duper cold now actually this winery opened only opened up in November last year so it's uh, relatively new and it's really cool looking too <laughs> Okay, this is my favorite of the day. This is actually so good. This is Mars Winery. This is my favorite red of the day. For sure. Look how big this glass is. <laughs> so if this Mars building like wasn't amazing enough, they also have a rooftop terrace. Like, look at the view. This is actually Fuji, but you can't see because of the clouds, obviously. The view is just amazing. So for each of these wineries that um, I visited on this trip, the bottles of wine you can buy at the wineries are not actually expensive. For some reason I thought, you know, like, oh, it's such a, a rich, fancy people thing to do. But the wine bottles start off at about 1,500 yen, so like $15. And the most expensive I've seen was like $40, like 4,000 yen. This is really good wine for not that expensive and oh my god the location of this place i mean once this place gets up and running i would highly recommend like they're taking to us now but this is phenomenal like it's breathtaking the view the architecture of the building the snow the great wine <sighs> i think the wine's got to me <laughs> okay so this is the wine that we tried it's definitely my favorite it is 60% Cabernet and 40% Musket Berry and it is just, look at this, how cute, so cute. We have just arrived at our hotel, it's like similar to our last one but the interior is like, look at that, and the garden outside. Side. It's so beautiful. This is the Tokiwa Hotel in Yumera Town in Kofu City. And I can't wait to get to my room and have dinner. This place looks. I've never seen it. It's like a Ryokan hotel, but like even in the lobby, it's amazing.
All right, so I got to my room and the doors are all open. If no one is staying there, they leave the doors open. Right, let's go. Tatami into like Ryokan. What's in here? Bathroom. And sure. Oh my god. The bath is like actually sunken into the ground. I've never seen that before. Fully sunken. This is the same as the other one, just like full room can get wet. Um, everything, all your amenities and hair liquid, hair tonic, aftershave. Um, I don't need those. And then, there you go. Just another typical toilet. I'm gonna assume this is futon. Yes into this big room oh it's very warm in here oh wow that's a nice chair <laughs> oh look you get a little sitting area too with couches and everything oh hello it's me there we go oh, what's in this cupboard this is probably just where you hang your towels and stuff yeah you cut the towels hot water machine um, look at this little unnecessary window let's see the view from the hotel oh oh my goodness gracious me looking over the Japanese gardens with snow this is amazing it's a little bit older than the last one but still nonetheless so nice I just came back from dinner and they moved everything here and set up my futon. Yay! I just went onsen again here in this hotel. It was lovely. It was super windy outside, but the warmth of the onsen kind of like regulates your body temperature. Obviously, I couldn't take my camera in there as there were other people there, but that's it for today. We have, uh, we're going to Nagano tomorrow, which I'm so excited about. I've always wanted to go to Nagano and it's going to be top of minus three. So <laughs> that should be interesting. Thank you guys so much for watching today and I'll see you in the next video. Bye.